All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to a very special sixth episode of Unleashing BY. We have not one, but two special guests with us today. Please welcome Will and Chuck from EnviroBlock. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Hey, Tyler. Thanks for having us. Great, great to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, we actually got connected with Will at South by, no, not South by Southwest, Consensus here in Austin a couple, about two months ago or so. Yep. And just had a awesome conversation really thought what you guys were doing was really intriguing i said hey we should we should keep the conversation going and and, and keep chatting so i'd love to just get a quick, quick background introduction about who you guys are kind of what you've been doing how you've got into the space and hear a little bit about viral block for sure for sure yeah i'm will mccann i'm co-founder and ceo of viral block originally from the austin texas area actually grew up two doors down from chuck which is how we know each other i uh, went to school at at Villanova outside Philadelphia, studied mechanical engineering, which is where I got obsessed with efficiency and then got into oil and gas out of that, lived all over North America for several years, either way back to Texas. So I got into the roofing industry, which is where I've been the last seven years, uh, all in and out of uh, hot attics, as you can imagine. Um, but uh, toward the end of 2021, I really started getting into the crypto space. You know, I didn't know what it was. Had a few buddies that were into it. Chuck was into it. So I started reaching out to him. You know, he's a small investor, but didn't want to miss out on whatever this was, you know? So throughout my research, I started looking at different companies, reading white papers and everything. And, you know, right off the bat, IOTEX is one of the companies that stuck out to me. You know, they're, they're all about bringing real world data to the blockchain, you know, and, and something you could touch and feel. They had the, the Pebble Tracker, which we utilize for our data collection. They had the UCAM, which is the end-to-end -end encrypted camera. You know, but they weren't just a white paper hyping a coin, you know, pumping and dumping. They were they're actually quiet building this this whole what we call now deep in uh, infrastructure. You know, they've got this very fast, scalable layer one blockchain that we are now utilizing ourselves, but was very attractive to an investor uh, right off the bat. So, you know, towards 2021, I started getting into IOTEX, you know, and I'm, I'm getting Chuck into IOTEX, you know, just kind of introducing him all about it. And there were some other companies as well. You know, Helium was kind of sticking out to us as well they you know with their whole 5g um and really real world utilization there are a couple of companies like i said that were off the bat kind of sticking out but iotex by far was above and beyond kind of the most attractive and really the most kind of undervalued project in the space so you know fast forward a few months they introduced this halo grant and it was like hey we have this awesome blockchain we have this proof of concept device you know and y'all go run with it come up with ideas to kind of bring this this real world utilization to, to, to use this uh, technology. So um, that's kind of where uh, EnviroBlock started. Yeah, that's so interesting. I always love hearing backstories about how people get introduced to crypto and then specifically like DYG thing. So you touched on a couple of things, specifically with your previous job, you'd spent a lot of time at Addicts. You mentioned the Pebble, which is part of your guys' product offering. Can you talk through the business model of EnviroBlock and, and how your past experiences sort of led to this aha moment of what you guys are building now? For sure, for sure, yeah. And so, you know, we we bought Pebble, we bought UCAM. We didn't really know what they were yet or what they could do. There were a couple of early projects that were, you know, could mine your data. We didn't know what that meant, right? Uh, but they released this Halo Grain. We had these Pebbles, and I was like, man, we got to think of a way to to use this device to to study the data off of it. And it clicked. Nobody is studying attic spaces. You know, most people think of an attic as a a wasted source space at best, you know. So, but anyone in the roofing industry, anyone in the heating and ventilation um, and air conditioning industry, you know, anyone building homes, trying to build an efficient home space nowadays, you know, they're very well aware of how important and efficient attic space is, you know, for the, not only for the energy efficient, the energy efficiency of the home, but now we're finding, you know, for health reasons as well, um, not only for preventing moisture and mold buildup, but as you're seeing in New York City, a lot of a lot of wildfires and outside environmental is issues that can make their way indoors as well. So sure. you know, it's a very important uh, space. Yeah, no, it certainly is. Uh, and, and Chuck, can you talk to what about sort of whether it was the IOTech blockchain component or the, the tokenized incentives for the analytics side, what was your angle that initially piqued your interest with respect to how these, these different components play together? Well, you know, being in the IT space for 20 plus years, my, my background has been more on the infrastructure side, helping companies get the infrastructure set up for their, their businesses. And I literally have sat through, because 
I've been around a little bit, but I, you know, I remember when, you know, Google first came out and hit my desktop, you know, and, you know, Amazon starting to sell books and you're like, you know, what's happening? So when, when the blockchain space came out, um, looking for projects, we started looking for projects. It's not so much a coin type concept. What's, what's somebody doing building? And the, the big, big excitement was, you know, they were taking physical devices and connect them to the, to the blockchain. And that's kind of what got, got the real said, Okay. This is a real business. This is just not something that somebody's created and, and doing a nice ICO and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, but then that, the, uh, the whole idea of, of helping comp- helping people or doing the, the environmental, improving the environmental. And, the, and it's really the, the reward mechanism is what's exciting for us is to have a reward mechanism mechanism to get back to the the end users and that's a that's a big a piece of the the blockchain space that we're we're excited about and looking forward to doing it and uh and it's just exciting you know the things it's just just changing environment you know with them just releasing with the iotex just releasing their devnet and stuff it's just you know it's a moving target but we're on the very i didn't want to miss Google and, and Amazon and here we come at it and I'm like let's get involved yeah you know? I love to hear that it's a very interesting point to be when you start seeing all these technology trends that'll transition just the way the world works and I think this is going to be one of those next revolutions which is why we're here and it's awesome that you guys are at the forefront of it so specifically with respect to how your product offering uh, appeals to customers and users right now it's, it's somewhat timely there's all the forest fires going on in New York looks like it's in sort of this dystopia uh, land, what are the the use cases that homeowners are actually purchasing your guys' product for? Like, what problems are you specifically solving? And can you talk through a customer journey of, of how they set it up and sort of the insights and value that they would actually get as a result of using your product? For sure, for sure, yeah. So our value is 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 two ways: one, to the homeowner to be able to monitor the efficiency and and health of their home, um, as well as you know they're earning rewards for their data which is something that a lot of people haven't done before. And that's this, this whole web three, um, word that we're hearing a lot of, you know, it's, it's taking control of your data for the first time, you know, so we're, we are offering an opportunity for people to get rewarded for their data while they're also monitoring the efficiency of their attic space, um, which in turn will correlate to the, the efficiency of their home uh, on a broader scale, you know, and right now we're, we're focused on building our network. You know, we're, we're in about a hundred properties worldwide. Um, which is not very much, but, you know, we're growing as fast as we can with, with, uh, the limited resources we are in bootstrap mode, obviously. Um, but our focus is on growth in a sustainable fashion, um, on a tokenomics reward mecha- mechanism as well, you know, so really driving the value home to the user of being able to monitor their home while, while earning for rewards for their data. And then as we, as we grow, that data will become more and more valuable, um, to, you know, a, ultimate end users would be, which would be like manufacturers, uh, home builders, utility providers, uh, things of that nature. Interesting. So, you know, the, the other thing is most, most of our clients have two things. They're interested in the blockchain. So they want to get involved in the blockchain and, and be rewarded. And the other piece is, is what, what is going on in my energy in my house? I mean, my AC is running at, you know, you know, I got to set it 72 or 76, whatever you have it at. And, and what is, what's going on? What's causing my arrogance? So there's a lot of curiosity of that end user. So if you don't care, you don't care. But if there's a, we're finding a lot of people do care what's going on in, in, in our home. Yeah. Your comment about people being interested in the blockchain is something I'd, I'd love to come back to. One of the other questions I had was you talk a lot about efficiency and obviously that's probably the, the driving point for folks that are interested in monitoring and um, sort of that data collection and analytics. Are there other sort of health considerations, whether it's mold buildup, things like humidity, those factor into why someone would, you know, have this in their attic? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Monitoring efficiency and, and saving money is obviously very attractive. Um, but, you know, here in the South where we live, it's all about removing heat from, from the attic space uh, to save money on cooling costs. You get the cool uh, up in colder environments, Canada, up in the Northeast, places like that. It's all about removing moisture. You know, with that in, in, a, in the winter time, if you don't have a properly ventilated attic and a moisture buildup can happen, creating mold 
And then now you're circulating mold throughout your house potentially, you know? So, and most of you aren't even aware of that, you know, and it's been pretty interesting, even in, in our numbers here in our growth, you know, part of our installation process is when people on board, they take pictures of their, the outside of their property. So you kind of know what, get a, a nice feel for what type of structure it is. Um, but also we have a picture of, of the installation of the pebble installed. Um, so, and we've already caught a couple, like, you know, I'll reach out once they submit them, like, man, it looks like you have mold in your hat. You know, we'll see what the, the data looks like. Um, and then sure enough, you know, there was one um, in Canada that their humidity was consistently above that 70% range and mold can form within 24 hours once it hits that 70%. So over and above just saving money, preventing a health hazard is, is a big driver for us. Um, and, you know, again, as we scale and grow, that data is going to be able to point out different problem areas as well, too. So, Sure. You're obviously always concerned about those types of this types of issues with your house. Uh, I, I mentioned to you, this to you offline. I lived in a house about five years ago and I was having tons of respiratory problems. And as soon as we moved out, they went away. And what I realized sort of shortly thereafter was there was a mold problem in the house and you affects you in ways that you may not even realize, but having a way to at least understand that there may be things going on in your house that could affect your health. It's really important and valuable for people. And so giving a way to monitor that and also be rewarded on the other side, I think is, it's a no brainer from a, from a sort of a value prop standpoint, but I wanted to go back to something you mentioned, Chuck, about users being interested in the blockchain component and sort of this tokenized incentive mechanism for those that are new to crypto due to web three, how are you broaching that? Whether it's from a user experience standpoint for onboarding, managing kind of wallets and crypto, how is that folding into your sales process or your conversation and, and ultimately your user experience? Well, you know, right now. All of our clients are very interested in the blockchain. Our, our end users are very interested. And we're finding that we're going to have to create a program outside that. We got to make it so that our, our parents could utilize this. And so that's kind of the take. We're having, we're having to look at it both ways. Our thoughts are you, you'll be sure. rewarded, rewarded more with if you're down the, in the blockchain space, down to that <laughs> economics. And if you just want, cash then it's a different different mechanism but we got to we got to provide both we got to provide both sets to make that work yeah and as, uh, as as chuck mentioned that my litmus test is always my dad he's like the least technical person that i know so if he can understand what we're doing that's always my uh my trial but yeah what chuck's touching on is you know ultimately there's this crypto space issue where you know everyone's scared of the crypto work if if they're outside of the space they think of it you know, not much beyond Bitcoin or Ethereum or scam, you know, those are kind of the three words I think of, right? Um, so that as a whole, as an industry whole, is just kind of a, a PR issue, you know? Um, but everyone kind of in the space is working on that kind of layer removal process. You know, how can you participate in the blockchain without feeling like you're participating? In the blockchain? That's kind of what Chuck's talking about is we do have plans of, you know, if you don't want to deal with a crypto wall or anything like that, uh, you know, in the future, we would love to be able to hook up your bank account, you know, and then we can, for a fee, exchange it back down. And she, you know, building experience for sort of the mass market and user, that's really the, the next way that's going to help push users into adopting these types of technologies and, and really sort of capitalizing on the entire uh, value proposition that can be offered. Yeah. And there's even more, you know, down the line, as we have our infrastructure in place, we'll be able to identify kind of outliers, which would mean inefficiencies, right? If someone's attic is choked out, it's not ventilating property, they're going to register way hot in comparison to, you know, that size and shape house, you know, what it should be in that climate, what it should be registering at. So, you know, that is then an opportunity to notify the client, hey, you have an issue, not only for them to know, um, but is now an opportunity for you know, a ventilation company or, you know, a roofing contractor in a lead source base, somebody to then have, you know, a hot lead toward a client with an actual issue, you know, so it's, we're connecting the dots with real world data from the consumer to the manufacturer as well. So this, these might not be exactly the same thing, but can you unpack your token economic model uh, a little bit for us? And in addition to that, sort of uh, the other ways that the business model works in terms of, you mentioned, um, offering sort of incentive programs for folks to be able to go out and uh, solve the problems that these customers are experiencing based on the data that you're able to tell them. Can you talk through how those relationships play together? 
For sure, yeah. So right now, everyone that has a Pebble, they're earning 10 IOTEX tokens every day. You know, so I'm sending those out every night to everyone online that's providing us data. You know, again, proving that, getting rewarded for your data um, in real time, which anyone in part of that is is a new experience and, and they, they really enjoy that. Um, but, you know, right now we're able to do that because we are a delegate or a validator for the IOTEX blockchain itself. So, you know, we're taking our earnings from being a validator and then directly putting those into our data rewards pool, which then we're able to to give out to our data providers to build our network up in our in our current bootstrapping mode. You know, and that's that's only sustainable to an extent. You know, it, it works for now. Um, uh, and we do have plans for our own token in the future as well. We are a U.S. entity, so we need to we need to make sure we're treading that on the right side of things. That's that's been one thing that we've been about from the beginning is is proving the Web3 concept, improving this deep end space, improving this blockchain concept, um, you know, the right way and doing everything the right way. We want to be the example that everyone points to of, of how to to do this the right way. So um, staying on the right side of, of the tokenomics and our own token as we venture down that path, um, we'll get there as we do. Um, but for now, we're able to utilize the IOTEX token just fine. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, the, the landscape definitely seems to be uh, both changing and becoming more difficult by the day. So you guys are certainly on the, the right side of that decision making process. Y you mentioned that as a validator, you're able to sort of reward data uh, at, at a scale that is currently sustainable. As that transitions into more users and more data credits being paid out, how is your guys' model going to maybe adjust or change to support that level of your of your business growth? In a sh short, short answer is we're still talking about it. We're still working on it internally. Um, you know, the main thing we want to do is is to make sure that we are setting it up in a sustainable fashion. You know, we don't want to to go back and double back on what we promised in six months, you know, and, and everyone be mad and really kill our momentum, you know. So um, that's our focus is making sure that we're setting up in a sustainable way uh, for the long term. This isn't a, a quick deal. You know, we want to we want to build this over a decade at least, you know, and, and look back and see look what we built and look at the infrastructure in place and the, the real-time data and the value that we're being able to extract from that. So, Yeah, that's awesome. Specifically with respect to IOTEX, Chuck, you mentioned this uh, a little earlier about their web stream dev net that just came out. How is that impacting your guys' business? You know, they're just, they're putting the infrastructure for us to take uh, any device that we have. So right now we're using one of their devices. So now we're going to end up coming up with our own device or somebody's device off the shelf and with this dev net they're putting together, we'll do our proofs and, uh, and put this data. All the data doesn't go on the chain. It's the proofs. So this dev net they're putting is creating our, our, not to get too technical, but the layer two where the data is interacted and the logic is, is going on. And then from there, once a proof is required, then that proof goes up to the blockchain. So you only write up the proof that says, Hey, this is person has accomplished this goal with their their data, with their Pebble, their devices, and then that the proof goes up to the blockchain and comes back, and that's they're creating that layer layer two for us. So a lot of times I thought, well, where's this data going to these Pebbles? Well, you can't put all this data on the blockchain because there's a transaction fee for every blockchain. So gotcha. you have all that data going there, and then the accumulation of that gets added to the to the chain. And they've been, they could not be more supportive. You know, they're very interested in our success as well, being able to be a use case on top of them as well. But, you know, the support we've gotten over the last year and a half just from them, you know, holding our hand, because there's a lot we're learning, you know, as, as technical as Chuck is, you know, there's a lot that we're figuring out as we go. And it's, this whole space is learning and evolving. It's all very early, but it's so exciting. Right. And we're just, we're happy to be here. Yeah, it uh, it definitely is changing by the by the minute. It feels like every month that there's a new product solution that comes out. It totally displaces what was the process of the way people were thinking about things. It it is the fastest moving space, and, and that's a lot of the challenge of too. You know, is is trying to stay above the noise. You know, and for us again, back to the legit legitimacy of everything, and really showing the value of real world data. You know, because there's a lot of games and a lot of other things going on out in the space but you know deep in this whole physical infrastructure i think i truly believe is really going to be that last uh onboarding of the the mass movement into the blockchain space because you know one by one all these projects around around people are going to start connecting and utilizing the blockchain for data sharing and and utilization and optimization so 
um, it's going to be very exciting. And again, we're just excited to be here on, on this early in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I fully agree with you. I think it's going to be the biggest use case that will drive mass adoption. Thinking of how things are moving quickly, uh, how are you looking at innovating on your business model in the near future and like new hardware or self-service kits? Like sort of give, give the folks some teasers of what you have for, down the pike. For sure. Yeah. No, um, it's no secret we're looking for our next device. You know, the this Pebble is great, but it is a proof of concept device. You know, it does have its limitations. Um, so, you know, we're in talks with a couple companies, Blues Wireless, uh, Seed, um, which has a, a real good partnership with IOTEX as well with their dev kit. Yeah. I think you saw that in Austin as well, Darren Consensus. So um, there's a couple of different devices that we're looking at and, and eager to get our hands on um, to be able to offer as our next offering um, to be able to collect data from, you know, and we've kind of had this 10,000 home uh, mark. You know, Demo has their 10,000 car mark that they're aiming for. I think that's a good number for data. You know, you get a you get enough of the different data sets of the different variables, you know, at that range to really get the full value out of the data. So, you know, our focus is how do we get there? You know, um, the, the next device that's actually feasible um, is, is the biggest key there. Um, we may even need to develop it in-house and have it produced. So we're looking at that as well, just based on availability and, and taking what we actually need from what's current, currently available. Um, so the hardware that we're looking at, as well as developing our app, um, so we're right now we're about to about to complete. We just completed our milestone two. Actually, we're submitting that here this week at IOTech. So that's a big deal for us. It gets our next kind of little exactly. milestone payment for our development help there. But you know, uh, users are about to log into their own data dashboard and be able to see their data in real time. Now, as long as we're going to bring our device in, we're looking at maybe a uh, a gateway device where we can collect other additional data, so things that you already have, because you brought, you mentioned that, you know, we're, we're already using and doing these things. How can we be, you know, rewarded for sharing this data to help, you know, through the environment? So that's, that's another thing that's down the line too. What are other sort of use cases? You mentioned like B2B opportunities, or maybe with builders installing these in, in homes. What are other ways that you're um, going to you productize what you're, what you're working on um, down the road in, in ways that aren't necessarily just a direct consumer play, but, but ways that you might be able to help be a value add for those potentially building or, or uh, setting up hardware uh, already? For sure. So kind of what I touched on a minute ago, being a lead source generator, you know, for for connecting either contractors in, in an H, HVAC space, roofing space, insulation space, you know, that's one of the biggest uh, remodel efforts right now, especially in the South, is spray foam insulation, you know, remodeling a house and really upping its energy efficiency and closing off the attic and, and installing spray foam insulation. So if you're able to get sensors before and after that remodel happens to be able to prove how efficient your remodel actually is, and be able to do the ROI calculation back to the consumer and, you know, be able to use that for marketing. That's kind of where we're looking at big picture. Um, so not only for man manufacturing optimization and marketing efforts there, but, you know, being able to prove as the homeowner, you know, that maybe now that I'm energy conscious and I'm able to track and prove uh, my, my uh, habits over time, Maybe I can prove year over year that I've saved so much energy and then now I can, with that proof from WebStream and EnviroBlock, I can now get a utility credit from my electricity company or something like that. You know, so there's there's all different cool. things that we're trying to think about um, in all different kind of uh, value plays there. You know, the the biggest thing is making sure that the the, the data is of value, you know, and that, that it is viewed as valuable and it's it's very attractive to someone um, like in the contracting space that needs leads. You know, there's um, hot leads are always valuable. It's no secret, um, but really being able to prove to the homeowner that they they need this in the first place to be able to install the efficiency of their home um, and be rewarded in the process because we can't build the network without people buying into it. You know, so that's that's again what we're figuring out with our next hardware as well. So, so exciting. Well, is there anything else that you want to share with everybody before before we wrap it up, specifically about what you're working on or things that you're interested in the space, things that they should be paying attention to? It's changing daily almost, it feels like. And it's cool seeing this data come in because we're finding things to study and, and even use cases that we weren't thinking of before, you know. So that's another thing that's going to come as we grow is is even more opportunities that we haven't thought of yet. 
Well, I, I for one, uh, came away incredibly informed. So if I'm a barometer, I, I think that um, hopefully could, could translate to, to everyone else. Where can people stay up to date with you? Where can they follow you? Where can they uh, purchase any hardware and get started? Main point of contact there is Twitter. Yeah, we're uh, Twitter slash EnviroBlock. Very easy to find us, and, and we try to stay as active and present as possible. But, you know, that's where you can find us, stay most up to date with everything that we're doing. Uh, if you're not following us yet, go ahead and hit that follow button. But that's uh, the Absolutely. best place, that and Telegram. But for sure, Twitter is uh, the best place to follow us there. So. Perfect. And we'll be sure to link all that down in the description. Uh, we'll, we'll put that, we'll put your website out so, so folks can know exactly where to find you. Um, well, Chuck and Will, this was an incredible conversation. It's very close to home for me. Just in A, I'm obviously obsessed and love DY, trying to learn in the deep end space as much as possible. I, I mentioned you offline with my new home purchasing experiences. These things have become very front and center uh, and it's a real problem when you guys have a really novel solution that I think is going to be incredibly popular throughout the world. So uh, I love getting a chance to learn and we just want to thank you so much again for taking the time to tune in. We will link all of those social handles down below, Twitter, website, Telegram, etc. Um, be sure to follow them, but we'll wrap it up there and we really appreciate you coming on the pod. Thanks for having us, Tyler. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.